Are you thinking about getting into a Highlander series? Do you want a short one? I've got a two book series to talk about today called The McGregors. Welcome to my channel. Mama needs to read some romance because nobody in these books would ever take all the marshmallows out of the Lucky Charms. Who does that? Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm still a new booktuber. I just really got into romance recently. I've been a Regency era gal and I've recently decided to try a Highlander romance series based on the recommendations of another awesome booktuber on here who recommended The Children of the Mist. But I made a mistake. I didn't take the advice of some people on Goodreads and I did not read the McGregor's series first. Everybody knows Julia Quinn because of the Bridgerton series, but a lot of people don't know Paula Quinn. So I wanted to share about her today. Paula Quinn is phenomenal. She's done great research and her characters feel so real. You feel like you're on adventure with them. I really enjoyed all of the kilts. I loved the accents. I didn't think I was going to because I'm just so used to the proper society of the Regency era, but I really, really liked trying something new and I hope that you might consider it too. So the McGregor series follows a clan known as the McGregors. It's in the 1600s in Scotland. This is a real family that was actually prescribed by the king, which means that they were considered banned. They weren't allowed to own land. They basically weren't even considered real people. And you could actually get a price if you brought them in or killed them. Uh, the king just wanted them gone because they were rebellious. They were considered barbaric because they still adhered to the clans. When So the McGregors went up to the Highlands and created a kingdom in Sky, Scotland. And Paula Quinn does a gorgeous job uh, describing it. I really, really felt like I was there. I want to go back. Callum McGregor is the he hero of Laird of the Mist, which is the first book in the McGregor series. He and his sister were in prison. They were in a dungeon for nine years when they were children. Well, one day he basically busts out of there with his sister and murders everyone. He has been since, he's created his beautiful kingdom up in Sky, and he has since been considered the devil McGregor. He has no mercy. He is very barbaric and he is out to get revenge on the Campbells, which I recently spoke to my father and found out that I am descended from the Campbells. Kind of excited at first and then after reading some of the McGregors, I was less excited based on how the Campbells treated the McGregors. <laughs> I was like, oh no. So Callum is going to get revenge when he bumps into Kate Campbell. Now she, it's sort of like a Romeo and Juliet type thing. They're from rival clans. She is actually fighting for her life when he discovers her. She's fighting another clan and then he helps her and decides to keep her for ransom in hopes that the uh, he can drive the uncle out into the open so that Callum can finally have his ultimate revenge. Well, surprise, surprise, in their adventures back to Sky, Kate and Callum fall in love. Callum doesn't even feel like his heart works anymore. And yet Kate being such a good natured, sweet person is able to see things in himself that he can't even see. And it's really a beautiful thing. For me, I don't really care much for the rough gruff type guys. I don't want a guy that's like super hard to win over uh, personally. So for me, it wasn't like I wasn't as excited about him. He definitely is an honorable man. He's a good man. He does love Kate, unfortunately, because he loves her so much and he's afraid of what her loving him will do to her, he tries to push her away, which is hard to read about. It was hard to watch, so to speak. Uh, there were some twists and turns in the plot here that I was not anticipating. Lots of great action beautiful scenery as they're traveling through. Um, there's some real danger and some major heroic acts. They wind up saving one another and uh, it's it's really beautiful. Uh, th there was a love scene though that I really did not understand the logistics of it on horseback. I don't know. But aside from that, I, I really enjoyed it. Now, Callum has several friends that feature prominently in Laird of the Mist. They're Brody and Angus, two huge barbarians who basically focus on whiskey and belching. And I could have used a little less of them. Could have used a little more of his commander of his clan, Graham Grant. Picture the hottest man you've ever seen in your life, and that's him. Well, I guess it depends on what you consider hot. This guy is like God's gift. He's built, he wears the kilt, 
like really well. He wears his bonnet, which when I first started reading Highlander, I didn't understand what bonnets were. I was picturing like an Easter bonnet. So I was like, please, something's wrong. I, there's a disconnect here. And so it's like a beret essentially, but he wears, Graham wears the beret backwards and he's got these gold curls that um, kind of fall and come down. He's got green eyes and dimples and oh my gosh, just so hot. <laughs> Anyway, as I'm, I'm getting to this, he is the hero of the second book in the McGregor series, Highlander Never Surrenders. And this, I've read seven books in the Holoquin between the Children of the Mist series, which is next, and then, of course, the first McGregor's, and here's the second one. This is probably my favorite. I will say he's a bad boy. He's a ladies' man. He doesn't even believe in love. He believes in war and battle. And that's pretty much it. He likes the ladies a lot, but he just uses them to pass the time. And they understand that. He's not serious about them uh, until he meets Claire Stewart. He actually encounters her tied to a tree. She's surrounded by dead men uh, that she's killed herself, as well as two other men that are chastising her. And she's about to finish them off, even though she's tied up. She's pretty much able to care for herself. However, Graham decides immediately that he needs to protect her against her own will. She ch He chases her down quite a few times just to save her, even though she's insistent that she does not need saving. Claire and Graham both are very passionate in every kind of way, and I mean every kind of way. Uh, they are both aggressive, a little bit. And uh, I mean, I liked the fire in both of them. I thought it was terrific. But man, does he start to get scared when he realizes he actually has feelings for her. What she's up to right now, she's trying to find her sister and keep her sister from an arranged marriage. Uh, her brother, Claire's brother, her twin brother had been killed. Right now what's going on in Scotland is the king is trying to come back, but there are generals that are basically in charge and it's just upheaval everywhere and you're either on your one side or the other and so there are quite a few people that could be pretending to be supportive of claire and her family and they're trying to figure out who is the rat in all of this so there's a big element of mystery as well as what happened to her brother how did he die and did he die one thing that she did that was really cool at the beginning of each chapter there's a line from something maybe a poem maybe prose it gave you a sense of what was going to happen in each chapter. Then you discover that each line is part of a letter. And I'm not going to say who the letter's from because it's kind of important, but I thought that was worked in so beautifully. Uh, it was really interesting. I found myself paging back through and reading the beginning of every chapter to read each line and, and see it more clearly. It was really fascinating how Paula did that in her books. There, there, there was a lot of action at the very end when they were basically Claire and Graham are going to go together and they are going to save the day. I expected a little more action right away. They kind of go off together and then they end up talking a lot more about politics and then there's more action, but it kind of stalled out just a little bit there towards the end for me. Um, the, the love scenes were fantastic. Um, I know that if you're a mom like me, you're oh, and if you're listening to books, you're always kind of thinking about what the kids can hear. And um, even if there's not a love scene, I will warn you, there is cussing in this. I'm not used to cussing a lot in books. Um, again, coming from Regency era, I guess that's probably why. But um, yeah, this Highlander book particularly, and again, this was the seventh, but it had the most cursing by far. So just be aware of that if you're listening to this book. Uh, the person who narrated both of these, Anthony Ferguson, I thought he did a decent job. He was a little brittle for me. It felt a little bit robot-like initially. I, I really like the narrator of the Children of the Mist series, which I'll get into in a, a future video. And her name was Carrington McDuffie. She was perfect. But I thought I thought Anthony Ferguson did a decent job. I also had a chance to read the books too. And I, I kind of liked reading it better than I liked listening to it. But that's that. So I would give Laird of the Mist four stars. I liked it very much. And I would give Highlander Never Surrenders five stars. If I could jump into a book and be with Graham Grant, I would do it. No, that's terrible. I don't want to say that. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm definitely going to be reading it again. There's my recommendations. Let me know if there's some series that you really like that are Highlander related. I'm looking for more stuff. I hope you're having a great day and uh, thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye.